It's Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Well, at least I'm on the dark side of the workshop today, over in the metal side. And I've got a miscellaneous project for those of you who normally watch my instrument repair videos. Today we're working on this old tractor. Kind of like my buddy Jeff Bradshaw would say, this old truck, and he hits the truck every time, you know. This old tractor we've had since the, oh, I don't know, I think we've had it since the early 80s. It's a 1960 model, I believe. It is a uh, MF35 utility tractor, as you can probably see right there. Great tractor. I honestly think... For the money, this is the best tractor there is anywhere in the world. I mean, you know, for the size and everything. All around, it's like the best design you could ever look for. It's got live power, uh, you know, on the on the PTO, you, it's got the double clutch, if you will. You know, I don't know what the technical name is. I'm sure somebody will know. But anyway, you push the clutch halfway down. The PTO can keep spinning, like if you're running a baler, but the tractor will stop. It won't move, you know, so you can let the baler catch up. I mean, it's just got all kinds of innovations and designs in this model tractor that a lot of the small tractors just don't have. It's got lots of power. Being an MF35, it's really got a lot more power than like say a Ford 8N or something like that. So it's really a lot more tractor than that. I really do think for the money and for the size and all the things considered, this is the best tractor you'll ever find. Really it is. Okay, but it does have one little drawback. <laughs> You know, in the early tractors, they, they almost all had generators. I am not a fan of generators. Those of you who have watched my instrument repair videos know that I don't use hide glue, which was the original way to glue instruments together. They made a lot of improvements in glue, so I use the modern improved versions. Well, that's the same way it is when it comes to generators. Generators was the old way of handling it. Even before that, they had other ways, but the generator is just not a good charging system in my opinion. Now I know there'll be guys argue with this all day long, but you know, if you get a good generator, then fine, you've got a good generator and it works great for you. But generally speaking, generators in general uh, just never keep up. I mean, they always have issues and they never really keep your system fully charged. Uh, at least that's been my experience on all the tractors I've had with generators and I've had quite a few. So in my opinion, it's time to finally quit putting up with this thing, not keeping the battery charged. And rather than have the generator rebuilt, I'm just gonna put an alternator on it. And I've already got myself a one wire alternator that I'm going to install on this. Now that's gonna require probably make some new brackets and things to mount this alternator. I put one of these on my Ford 4000 after years and years and years of putting up with the generator and it was the best decision I ever made. Because now I just go out there and the thing starts. You know, I don't have to deal with all that issue. I thought I'd have the same thing on this one. You know, I thought, well, this, this is gonna be a piece of cake. Just put this on here and we're off to the races. Well, guess what? After bragging on the wonderful design of this tractor and how well it's made and all that, they did do one really stupid thing. I'm sure it was, you know, probably smart in another way because it's easy. But they put the RPMs, the tachometer, works off the generator. <laughs> Let me show you a close-up. You can probably see this silver cable and this end right here. This goes up to your tachometer or your, I refer to it as just the RPM meter. You know, there is a meter up on the dash that shows you your RPMs. And that works right off of this. And so it's basically your tachometer is, is basically what it amounts to. And so this screws right into the back end of the generator. It's just a speedometer cable, just kind of like you would have on your car going into your transmission or whatever. It's just odd to me that they ran it into the generator, you know. I guess RPMs are RPMs, you know. But, uh, anyway, it just unscrews right there. So the bottom line is when I put the alternator on here, I'm not going to have my RPMs anymore. You know, for years the RPMs didn't work on this thing anyway. I put this new on here about, oh, probably five or six years ago, and I had forgotten that it runs off of the generator when I ordered the new alternator. I didn't even stop to look at this. Some things have to sacrifice, and I'd rather sacrifice this than the charging of the battery. So 
Here we go. Very often anymore, when you see a large bolt, it's a three quarter inch bolt because it seems like everything modern uses a three quarter inch. Now that's if it's not metric, of course. Most of the large bolts these days, if, if it's a, you know, a SAE type bolt, is a three quarter inch. But on these old tractors, the large bolts were only 11 sixteenths. So I've got my 11 sixteenths inch gear wrench here, which these are the handiest wrenches ever invented by a human. If you don't have a set of these, you need to get a set of these because they got the ratchet in one end and they've got the you know standard wrench on the other end. So you can get into almost any kind of bolt with these things and it's really handy because you can use the ratchet there just like a socket wrench. I haven't looked to see what other bolts I've got, but I've got a couple of more bolts down below. I think I'll just take this one, go ahead and take it off. And it was loose there for a while. Now it's gotten tight again. There it is. It's a, it's kind of an odd looking bolt. It, it's a small thread. It's only a 5 16 inch thread with a great big head like that. That's kind of unusual. You don't see that very often either. Yeah, these old tractors had their design, that's for sure. More than likely, that'll probably push up there now. Yeah, there it goes. The belt's loose now. So I've got two more bolts underneath here that I'm not going to show removing, but I'll take those out and then we'll take the generator off. Well, you can see I've got her loose and taken her out of there. And all I've got now is to clean up, uh, you know, about 30 years of grime that's just caked up in this area here, which won't take nothing to, to clean up. But then we can start fitting it for the alternator. And I think it's going to be a reasonably easy fit up, although I should never say that because that just automatically means I'm going to run into problems. One of the things I want to do when I redesign this is I want to be able to try to use the same fan belt uh, so I don't have to go out and get a new fan belt. Even though this one's an old belt, it wouldn't hurt to replace it. It's just a kind of a hassle and avoid the hassle if you can. It looks like the way this bracket is, it would hold the alternator this back away from the uh, belt too far and make the belt crooked. Fortunately, this thing has a bend in it going this way. I was going to just make a new bracket, but I think what I'll do is I'll just take this bracket off off and straighten it uh, because it could be straightened very easily and then I think it's going to be just about right if I straighten it. Anyway that's what I'm going to try first. This might give you a little better view of it. Anyway this is the bracket here and the bracket goes back then it goes that direction and then it goes straight back. So I'm just going to take this one bolt off of this bracket, take it out of here, straighten this part out and I think the alternator will fit to that pretty easily. Uh, should give me clearance and everything that I need. So I think it's gonna work pretty good. Anyway, that's the approach I'm going to take. Very tight quarters there, or I would have used the ratchet end of that wrench, but it's just not enough room to get it in there. I see, and there's so little room, they actually made a hook on the end of this so that you don't have to take the bolt all the way out. The bolt wouldn't come all the way out because of the fan belt. So anyway, that's what the bracket looks like. And now I'm just gonna straighten that out and see how that works. It's really nice having this old anvil. It's really neat to have it to be able to straighten things like this. Yes, I could use heat, I could do that, but this usually works fine on this kind of soft metal. Now you have to be a real man to do that though because uh, when you're holding this on this hand here, it stings the heck out of this hand as you hit it. But, I've been there and done that so many times, I don't even notice it. Well, that's as straight as it's probably ever been, right there. Let's see how it fits now. Quite honestly, it's hard to tell if it's going to line up perfectly or not, but I think it's going to be very close. Problem is, I can't get it in there because of the bottom bracket is hitting this thing here. So I'm going to have to take the bottom bracket out, then see if we can get it fitted up on this one, and then we'll have to make a new bracket for the bottom because this bracket's just not going to work, I'm sure. Well, they got their 11 16 inch bolts on here again, but almost no room to even get my gear wrench in here this time. So I guess I'll have to go to the traditional socket wrench and see if I can find room to get them out of there or just take a little more time and just use the regular end of the wrench. And I think they're gonna come out anyway and be loose here in a second by where I can get them out by hand, I think. If I can just get the wrench on it, this is the hardest problem. There it is. I think they're gonna come loose. They feel real loose. 
yeah they're they're loose enough to go by hand boy that's a really really heavy bracket for the bottom they definitely overbuilt the bracket on the bottom that's probably five sixteenths inch steel a quarter inch steel would have been an overkill so now maybe i can at least line this up and see how it lines up it looks like it's lined up perfectly right there on this side of the bracket which is what i was wanting can't tell what i'm hitting down below but i'm hitting something there it is got it out of there now now i can line it up and it's it really does look like it's lined up perfectly like i got lucky there i don't see a kink in the belt anywhere the belt looks perfectly straight now the trick is figuring out how to make the bracket it looks like i'm just barely going to have enough adjustment in the in it to tighten up the belt actually i can turn it this way there you go now i've got a lot of adjustment i didn't think about that that's a good point i'm glad i did that that will also help me build in the bracket too down below much better that's going to be an odd bracket to build wow unfortunately this part here lies r directly in front of this it's like right there so it's going to be awkward to try to use that as my bracket although i, I can put a u-shaped deal on there and hook it to this which is probably what I'll do. Now that I think about it, that's probably the easy way to do it. The only problem with that is deciding the exact size of it. And if I can come up with the exact size of it, it'll be easy. So I'll have to put this bolt in here and hold it temporarily, I believe. I really did get lucky. Straightening that out put this belt perfectly straight. I mean, it looks just like it would have come from the factory that way. It really looks good. So I'm very happy with this. Now I just got to make a, you know, a bracket to fit the two little holes on the bottom and go back to one of these mounting holes. That shouldn't be too terribly hard to do, but it's tricky. Uh, I will say that. So it's going to be hard to show it too. I'm going to try mocking up something here uh, before I go to the final try. Going hand cam on you. Sorry about that shaking, but that's just the way it is. Maybe you can see I've got a clamp on a small bracket there where that little hole is. That hole doesn't need to be there. It was just that's the way that piece of metal came. Anyway, I'm going to weld it right there at the joint where those two pieces of metal touch. I'm just going to put a little tack weld on that right there to hold it. And then I'm going to get a little bracket on the other side, tack it on. And then I'll take the whole thing off, weld it up real good on the bench get the holes drilled through there so that I can mount the alternator bracket through the bottom holes. So anyway, I'm going to tack weld it in place while it's there. Well, there's the bracket. There'll be a hole through here that will put a bolt through and hold the bottom part of the alternator there. I'm going to weld it across here at the moment. I'm not going to show the welding because I don't have the right equipment to uh, film welding and things. And plus, I'm afraid it'll spark up the lens and mess that up. Um, I am just going to weld it, get it good and solid. Then we're going to drill these two holes. You can probably see I've got the bracket clamped to the drill press table. I've got the drill bit right against where I want to uh, drill the hole mainly because this thing doesn't have much travel and I'm hoping it'll have enough travel to come down and mark the bottom side under here. You can't really see the bottom side in the view but it's underneath here and I'm hoping the drill bit will come down through and mark the other side of the bracket but we'll see. I doubt it'll happen but we'll try it. As I suspected there's just not enough travel. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna combat that problem. We'll see. I'll figure something out. This is about the sketchiest setup you'll ever see anybody do. It truly is. It's dangerous. I'm not going to lie to you. I've got the bit down through the hole here, and I have this clamp to the table, and I'm going to at least score where I need the hole. Probably have to go ahead and drill it all the way through if I can. I've got a piece of aluminum here to protect my table. Golly, I don't know if this is going to work or not. I mean, it does turn right now without any problem, but this could catch and just make all kinds of issues. You just never know. It's about to grab and twist it out, so I'm going to reclamp and try again. Like I said, it's sketchy at best, you know, but you got to do what you got to do to get the job done. And the reason I wanted it this way was because that way the holes will be aligned a little bit better, I think. I think. I'm not even sure of that myself, but I think they'll be a better aligned. 
<laughs> All right, it still seems to be free, so here we go. Well, as often happens, at least for me, I'll get halfway through something and then I hit a hard spot, and that's exactly what happened. Wouldn't you know that I actually hit a hard spot in that steel and it didn't want to drill through it, but it did go through it eventually there. Probably ruined the bit, but that's okay. I got plenty of bits. It's amazing how I drilled the hole with that bit, but for whatever reason, it's tight. Even though this doesn't look that great, at least the holes, I believe, are lined up, so I, I think it'll hook up wonderful. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a little bit of this off because it, it's sticking out past this one and grind it off more evenly, and we'll see how it looks. I made this little platform and this little stand for this cheap Harbor Freight bandsaw. It's been one of the handiest things I've ever built and put in my shop. It just is handy. I use it all the time for cutting off little pieces of steel like this. Just a handy, handy machine. And just because I can, why not? And yes, it would be better if it was prime first, but it's just an alternator bracket on a greasy old tractor. Well, now that we have the alternator mounted and the belt is tight, everything's fine there, and it looks perfect, it really does. It almost looks like a factory job. Now we just need to run the one wire from the terminal on the alternator back through and connect it up to the positive side of the solenoid. At least that's how I did it on my Ford tractor and it's been working fine for years. So that's the way I'm going to do it on this one and I'm gonna assume it's going to work just fine. So here we go. You know what assumptions do. The difference is here, I think I may have to take off some wires, the regulator and some of that stuff and I'm not sure about that part yet. I've already tested the length of this, so I know it should be the right length. And I'm just going to feed it back through. Very, very simple wiring process. Got to get my the correct... I'm sure it's a metric wrench. I don't have a metric wrench handy. Let's see if one of these will fit it. Almost. The 3 8 almost fits. It looks like that'll be tight enough. That's over away from... The heat, you know, it's it's not touching anything that should burn it, I don't think. And we'll put it through and connect it on the other side. So the other end of that wire then that I hooked to the alternator came right over here and it's connected to the top post on the solenoid. And that's it. That's all I think I have to do. Now, I do think there could be some issues with this regulator and disconnecting those wires. The two wires that I took off the generator, I know they come somehow to this regulator, so I'm going to tape them up. At least for the test right now, I'm not going to do anything else, and I'm going to test it and see if it's charging and etc. We're going to start the tractor up now. I've got the meter sitting here. I'm going to run these over to the battery, and you'll be able to see, you know, that it's working. It seems to be working perfectly. I've got it set on uh, DC voltage, and here we'll, we'll start the tractor now, and then we'll check the voltage. <laughs> I think you can see it was holding steady at 14.5. Now that's assuming the tractor wasn't vibrating the camera. I couldn't watch everything at once. Regardless, my friends, whether you could see that or not, at least I can tell you that it was charging at 14.55 volts and it was holding steady there. So that is perfect. No more problems with that lousy generator. <laughs> I'm just so tickled to have this thing fixed and I won't have to worry about the battery being charged anymore. Now, I will tell you, you can get such a thing as a low RPM alternator. I bought one that said that it would work on tractors, so I'm assuming it's a low RPM alternator, although it didn't actually say that. I'm just telling you that as a caveat. This one seems to be working fine, so I'm not too worried about it. If it's not a low RPM alternator, if you start it at a very low idle, it won't excite itself and get started. So you have to rev up the engine then. So if you're going to buy one of these for your tractor, look and get one of them that is made for low RPM. Uh, then you won't have that issue. But even that is not that big of an issue because almost always you have to rev the tractor up a little bit. And once you rev it up, then it starts charging and it keeps charging at that point. So 
you know, it's not that big of a deal, but just so you know that, they do actually make them for low RPM. I hope this video helps you. It's a very easy job, really. A little bit of work on mine because I had to make brackets. You can actually buy a kit for specific tractors and often you don't have to make the brackets. The brackets come with the kits. But I decided to just buy the alternator and make my own brackets. Well, friends, I want to give you an update on this after showing you how I did all that. I got to thinking about it and I thought, well, you know, really, I need to run that wire through the voltage meter here, the amp meter, so that I would know what the voltage is, know whether or not it's charging or not. Not a big deal one way or the other. The alternator seems to charge pretty faithfully, but I thought, you know, it'd be nice to run the wire through there. So all I did was I just ran the wire from the alternator to the positive side of the amp meter and then from the negative side of the amp meter I ran that down to the uh, battery side of the solenoid. That's all I did but now it works and I'll show you what it looks like as it's running. So now you can see the amp meter there and I'll start it up and I think you'll see it kick over. So now it really works nice. I'm glad I did that. Uh, it just gives you that little bit of sense of security. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, I've lost my tachometer now. You know, that's not hardly that big a deal in a way because for years that tach didn't work anyway. It probably didn't work. I would say for 15 or 20 years it didn't work. And then I, about five or six years ago, I fixed it while I was fixing other things. It was nice having it, but to be honest with you, I run this tractor so much and I can tell by the sound how fast it's running. I mean, I really can. So it's not that big a deal. Uh, at least now I have a dependable charging system. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I sure would appreciate that and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching. Blah, blah.